when I was in China, I'd always heard about the underground church in China, and I had an opportunity to, uh, to teach at uh, an underground missionary training um, place. And uh, so these are the believers. They were all about 18 to 25. These are the believers that the church looked at and said, man, these are... These guys are they're hardcore. We're going to get them to this training area because they want to go into the Middle East. They want to go to places where it's going to be even more dangerous, and they're just ready to give their lives. And, you know, you walk, you know, just my oldest daughter, Rachel, and I walked in, and the way they were praying was just different. I mean, it was so intense, crying out to God, the way they would sing. You just felt that energy in that room. But then they started sharing, and, they, had, you know, I came there to teach, and I was like, you guys, I feel really dumb up here, you know? Like, I, I want to hear your life. I go, tell me about the persecution. And, because uh, I want to hear from you. I came here to learn. I didn't come here to teach. I've made that mistake in the past thinking, I'm going to go there to Africa and I'm going to, you know, teach them. And then you realize, oh my gosh, I need to just sit and listen to your stories, your life, because you have a faith I don't get. And so I, I told them, that's what I want to hear about. And they gave me this weird look, like, what are you talking about? I go, persecution. Don't you guys get persecuted? And they go, well, of course, but everyone does. And I go, no, not everyone does. And uh, I, they just, they, they, it was really, it was a strange interaction because they go, well, explain what you mean. And uh, I said, like, when, when people persecute you for, like, sharing your faith, and they just started rattling off scripture. They go, but that's what Jesus said would happen. Why do you even want to hear about that? Like it was so commonplace. And, but then, and then I, I said, just, just tell me some stories of what the last time. Tell me the last time, you know. And, uh, you know, so this, you know, girl gets up and she goes, okay. And she explains real broken English. But she talked about uh, just the funnest group of people. You would have loved them. I mean, they're full of joy. They're laughing, you know. And this girl is talking about them having a meeting. And, and then, you know, the government officials, you know, someone warned them, hey, they're coming, they're coming. And she just talked about, she goes, ah, first time in my life. She goes, I thank God I'm so skinny. She goes, and she talked about how... <laughs> It was so funny. Everyone's laughing. She's talking about how she fit in between these two boards and how she was trying not to breathe and, and then praying because her backpack was downstairs. Oh, Lord, please don't let them see my backpack. And, you know, and some of her friends got taken away. And, you know, but meanwhile, they're just laughing and, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, right on, you're skinny. You know, just, just on and on. You know, another guy gets up and he just talks about how, oh, yeah, these three officials came and we thought, okay, there's only three of them. There's 13 of us let's just run everyone run in a different direction you know and everyone in the room's like yeah, you know and they're just all start running because then he started firing you know they start firing their guns and he goes but we were taught never stop running so we just kept running and going oh, i hope they're bluffing you know and just shooting in the air and sure enough you know they said we're shot in the air but we're gonna shoot you next stop he just said we just ran and ran because that's the way we were trained and everyone's in there yeah you know just it's just this is life to us and i'm sitting there going wow really man that's cool you know and they're just like what's up with you i go I go, you got to understand. I go, where I come from, it's not like that. And uh, I, I said, where I come from, we have these buildings called churches. And we attend them. And, and, and we have so many that if you find music that you like better at a different one, you just switch. <laughs> and, uh, and that's exactly what they did. They're laughing hysterically, like, <laughs> shut up. I go, no. I go, seriously, if there's better child care there, you know, they have better schools for their kids or the service is short or whatever else. We switch, we jump from place to place. And these guys are just looking at it. In, um, I mean, that was the weirdest part was how hard they were laughing. <laughs> and because to them, they just go, that doesn't make sense. They said, how did you, how do you, how do you read this book and come up with that? And I go, I know, I know, I know, but, but it's just what we do there. And it was, it, was, it was just one of those moments where you walk away going, wow, it really is ridiculous. Some of what we do, like, how did we get that from here? And, and so for me, it was like, I, I needed to see that. I need to see that when you, you just put India and China together, that's 40% of the world's population. 
okay, we're not talking about a little weird country here. That's 40%. The U.S. is about 4% of the world's population. So you've got to understand that the majority of the world, the way they view Christianity, the way Christians conduct themselves, is very different, and that we are the weird ones. And in fact, we're the ones that are laughed at by the majority of them out there. <laughs> look at what they do. And, and, and so when I look at this, it's, I went because I needed to see that. I just need to see, is it really true that people live in a manner that's worthy of the gospel? Because I want to be that, and I've and I got to strive after that, and I pray for that. And I go, God, give me a, a burden for this. I said, God, one of the things that doesn't make sense in my life is I believe that there are a lot of you still who you know your life doesn't make sense in light of the gospel, you're still all about you. It's because when the Holy Spirit comes into you, he changes something. Suddenly your life, whereas before everything was about you and what you like and what you wanted, suddenly now you care about the things of God and you're just like, it's not even about me. I don't care about my reputation. I don't care about my stuff. I don't care about how I'm going to live in the future. All I care about is this God and his reputation and his glory. Like There's a supernatural regeneration that takes place in your life where, wow, I am not all about me. Like, I, 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 I don't even really, I'm not even thinking about me. I'm thinking about God and his reputation. And I want everyone to see how beautiful he is. And then this other change takes place where it's like, wow, I'm not thinking about me. I'm actually thinking about other people. Like, I'm consumed with these people that are having a hard time. Like, how can I help them? How can I serve them? How can I give to them? It's just this change that takes place. It's like, wow, that is a miracle. All my life I've thought about Francis Chan, and now suddenly I I care about the things of God and his reputation. I'm more concerned that people have a low view of him, and I'm more concerned about these other people and their futures rather than my own. I'm not just consumed about me and my retirement. What am I going to look at? What's my family? But suddenly I'm thinking about all these people. I love them. And suddenly it's, ah, I I hope they have a high view of God. I I, I care much more what you think about God than what you think about me. See, these are the things that take place when the Holy Spirit comes into you. It's it's unbelievable because your whole life you're consumed with yourself and then you change. But I, I, I just think a lot of you hear that and you still go, wow, that's not me. I'm still thinking about me. In fact, I'm here for me. And maybe God will help me with this or that. And, and I just go, gosh, I don't think it ever happened where the Holy Spirit came into their lives. Not that I'm judging anyway. It's more like a concern and a fear. When I first started in ministry, it was because of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, which scared the heck out of me, reading it as a high schooler, where Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And that scared me. Not for myself. It scared me because I'd look around and go, man, that means a lot of people are deceived. They come to the end and they're expecting to go to heaven and they're in for the shock of their lives. When God says, I was never your Lord. You never followed me. It was always still about you. And, and that's never left me. You know, 25 years later, I still get concerned for some of you because I go, man, has the Holy Spirit really come into your life? Because after pastoring here for so many years, I just assumed a lot of things and assumed people were right with God and then things happen in life and then they show their true colors and you go, wow, Really? Maybe I never really, maybe no one really came alongside of you to make sure you really got it. I feel like I've given this type of message over and over, but I just, I can't help but give it because I think, God, if you're not going to be there with me in the end, nothing else matters. And, and I look at some of you kids that are in the room, and I think some of you, I watched you grow up here, and, and so many kids that just, once they turn 18, once they're out of the house, I just realize, wow, those 16 years you sat in that room with me. It just was never yours, was it? It was always just your parents, and now you're showing 
that it was never about you and God. And it just breaks my heart. Um, and just want you to know, I pray. I prayed even this morning. I was in tears praying for you. Like, God, for those who don't really know you, who've never really just decided to follow you and made you their king, just joyfully said, man, I want to follow that God. For those who don't understand this amazing love relationship where it's like, oh, man, are you kidding me? I'll sell everything I have and follow you. I just pray that maybe today, through the word of God, through the Holy Spirit, you would see, wow, if I say I believe that, my life sure doesn't show it. And I need that Holy Spirit to come into me and change me. And that